journalist for doing this, for calling the national radio station. But they were also really proud. I found a way to express myself. They laughed for the rest of the day, but I didn't care. I had the final laugh. The next day, the national radio manager called me, and he offered me my own radio show. So I named it the Music Box, and I had the radio show all throughout the war. And I named it the Music Box because I love music so much. And I would sing and play my guitar, I would talk about different instruments and composers. But I also decided to do something even more intimate. I started sharing parts of my war diary. Now today, it's a book, translated into many different languages. But back then, it was just a notebook, and in fact, I started writing my diary during that first month and a half that we spent in the basements. Even though I was surrounded by 200 some people, it was, I never felt more alone, more isolated, because I had all these questions, all these anxieties, all these emotions, and no one was that available to answer them, or even they simply didn't know what to tell a 12 year old girl. So I opened a notebook one day and I started writing a diary, and instantly, I found this friend, I found this oasis, this haven where I could just go and lay all my feelings, all my questions, all my anxieties, all my dreams, and feel safe for the moments that I was writing. So I started reading parts of my diary, and I guess people really liked it. They kept tuning in to hear the next entry, the next entry. And this famous poet from my country, he contacted me, and he asked if he could read more of my writings. So my parents and I, we created a manuscript. We gave it to the poet. He read it very quickly. He came back to me and he said, Nadja, this book has to be published. And not 10 years from now, or whenever this crazy war is over, because you and I, we might not even see the end of it. But now, in a city <coughs> where innocent people are dying every day, innocent children are dying every day, who better to inspire adults but another child? So at the age of 14, I published my first book. And I'll never forget my very first book event. It happened in this underground theater, downtown Sarajevo. And about 500 people showed up. Literally dodged bullets that day to come and hear me read from my book and get a copy of my book. And I just had no words. I was so touched by that kind of solidarity of supporting one of their own. Someone started a nickname for me that day, and it sort of stuck. It was Bosnian Anne Frank. Now I was honored by that. I had read Anne Frank's diary, and I thought to myself, she was such an intelligent, insightful young girl. She left an incredible piece of work for generations to come. But I knew that she died during the Holocaust, and having already been wounded, I was so worried that I wouldn't survive the war in my country. So it was a burdensome nickname to have as well. Now, all throughout the war, my parents were desperately trying to get me out of the city. Uh, I was constantly going out into the streets to get to my radio show, and, you know, just trying to visit friends and family, and we were always in danger. In fact, you didn't have to go outside to get killed or wounded. People were dying in their sleep, in their bedrooms, in their kitchens, in their bathrooms. So, my parents were desperately trying to evacuate me, and they did this by writing all these letters to different organizations like Red Cross, UNICEF, all these places they wanted to help get kids out of the city, but their attempts were unsuccessful. The city was entirely besieged by tanks and weapons. The only way to leave Sarajevo was this underground tunnel. It was dug out during the second year of the war, just by regular civilians who had to find a way to have things brought in, as well some people needed to leave the city. So the tunnel started at the very outskirts of the city. It went underneath the airport runway and even some nearby enemy territory and it emerged in a nearby town that was connected with the rest of Bosnia, unlike the capital. The tunnel was about five feet tall, sometimes dipping to four feet. I myself am 5'7". It had all these pipes running through it at the ceiling and they were dripping, so it had terrible stench of urine and sweat. And it had several inches of mud on the floor. The tunnel was also very narrow. You could only have people going in one direction at a time. Now, as miserable as it sounds, the tunnel was our lifeline because all the food, medicine, mail, anything we needed to survive for three and a half years came to us through the tunnel. The tunnel was also 
used from the other end. If someone was so badly wounded by a bombshell or bullet that they couldn't have survived without proper medical attention, they were actually evacuated through the tunnel and taken to other parts of the world. The tunnel was used by nurses and soldiers because they needed to be very mobile. Sometimes they would rush through the tunnel towards the city to defend the perimeters, and sometimes they would rush through the tunnel towards other parts of Bosnia as needed. Finally, the tunnel was used by regular civilians. However, you had to have a government permit to use it. And these permits were terribly hard to come by. So, three and a half years into the war, my parents finally get a letter from one of those organizations that they wrote to for help. And this letter stated that I was invited as one of 20 people, teenagers from Bosnia, to come to America. There were these two wealthy American gentlemen who decided to use their money to sponsor 20 of us. And they found 20 host families, American families, who volunteered to you know, take in each of these kids, teach them English, offer them an education and a normal life. I couldn't believe it. I always wanted to learn English. I always wanted to come to another country. But above all, I just wanted to escape the war. I wanted to survive. Now, the letter said that we had five days to make it to the neighboring country, Croatia, where we were all supposed to meet up at the airport and take a single flight to America. For the next three days, my mom went to the government building and she asked for two tunnel permits. The journey through the tunnel and through the rest of Bosnia was so dangerous that the plan was I couldn't possibly do it alone. She would escort me. All three times, however, that she asked, she was denied. So on the third night, my mom and I decided to leave illegally. We didn't have the permits, but my mom had a friend who was a nurse. And if you remember, I mentioned that nurses and soldiers could use the tunnel quite frequently. They didn't have to bother with the permit every time. In fact, they had a special ID that showed that they were either nurse or soldier, and that was enough. So my mom's friend lent her her ID. The law said that a nurse could take her child through the tunnel with her, as long as that kid was 12 years or younger. I was 16 at the time. So for the very first time in my life as a girl, I wanted to look younger. So my mom took my hair and put it into these two big pigtails, you know, trying to make me look a little cuter, a little smaller. And we were hoping that that would work. So my dad took us through the tunnel. It was in one of the most dangerous parts of the city. The aggressors, the tanks and weapons, they knew that the tunnel was there. And they couldn't hurt you once you were under the ground. But they did as much damage as they could right at the entry and right at the exit. So there was a long line of people just standing there to have their permits checked by the soldier who was standing right at the entry to the tunnel. We stood there for about an hour, literally waiting to either live or die. <coughs> Bombs were exploding nearby and we had nowhere to hide. All the buildings that once were there were just crumbs left over. Cars, just carcasses lying about. Finally, we made it to the front of the line, and the soldier asked for my mom's papers first. She showed him the nurse ID. He said she could go. Then, he asked for my birth certificate. Well, my birth certificate said I was 16, which meant that I needed a permit all on my own. I didn't have one, so he said my mom could go, but I couldn't. That wasn't the point. I was the one who was invited to America. So we both started crying, just begging him to let us through, to make an exception. He said 